Medina before the advent of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was run by the Banu Ayyuha, one of the three Jewish tribes living in Medina at the time. And they used to levy taxes on the traders, set up monopolies, rent out spaces, and engage in all manner of usurious transactions, thereby siphoning off a good portion of the wealth of the city into their own personal coffers and impoverishing the rest of its inhabitants. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam freed the people by freeing their market, by establishing a new market that was free of all such measures and impediments. And again today, we find ourselves in the same boat. We find ourselves oppressed and overtaxed and forced to use venues and institutions that contradict the very principles of our deen. Riba, usury, has wormed its way into almost all our tradings and dealings. Indeed, it has replaced trade, for the word trade, or bayah in Arabic, implies equitable transaction where both parties in the transaction get, them, get what they want from the deal rather than one party screwing over the other one. Nobody wants to pay two and a half million for something worth one million, and yet that is what most people are compelled to do if they want to own a house. One party gets all that it wants, while the other is forced to accept its terms. So what is the solution? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The translation of which is, Allah has made trade halal and has made riba haram. The answer to freeing ourselves is through true trade, usury free and equitable to both parties. Trade by traders, the buyers and the sellers, meet and agree transactions between themselves. The zones for this are known, the markets and the caravans to bring the goods to the markets. And they need to be brought back. For such things are few and far between in this present day. That is the reality of free trade, not the abomination that it has become. For all the while the usurers and their stooges oppress us, while they are oppressing us, they tell us that this is the natural consequence of free trade. So called free trade, as they call it. And that is as clear an example of double speak as you can find. For it in fact means the very opposite of what it says. Free trade means enslaved trade. Indeed, in 1853, Henry Carey, the chief financial advisor of Abraham Lincoln, equated this free trade to slavery and exploitation, saying in his book, the slave trade, domestic and foreign. By adopting the free trade, quote unquote, we place ourselves side by side with the men who have ruined Ireland and India and are now poisoning and enslaving the Chinese people. Re-establishing zones and venues wherein we can recover our financial independence and our dignity is a must. And this mosque market is and will be, inshallah, one such zone. It may only have a few dozen schools, but it is always from such small and humble beginnings that great things grow. The mighty oak from the acorn, the mightiest khilafat and empire from a few dozen men gathering in a house in Mecca. It is a template that other mosques may follow, so lend your support back this endeavor and help us reclaim the marketplace and reunite Ribadat with Mu'abadat. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru wa alika lakum risa'i wa muslimin wa kulli damta wa astaghfiru wa kumna uru wa kuru wa kuru
No matter how little they want to sell, it's free to use the market whenever they want. This was one of the basic principles of the marketplace. So there was no requirement for a trader to have a permit or a license or any other such thing that would then enable him to trade. There was no requirement for this. It is narrated that Ali ibn Talib, رضي الله عنه, said, "Suq al-Muslimin kahusan al-Musallim, faman sabab." Of the mosque 
So nor should you do the same in a marketplace. That is not to say that shops or storehouses are forbidden, for they are not. It is perfectly acceptable to build yourself a shop on your own land or even rent one from somebody else, but not within the confines of the marketplace. It needs to be kept empty and free so that anyone and everyone can come and use it at any time. That is the way to encourage trade and encourage the circulation of wealth. For if there was no available venue of this type, then there would be no incentive for traders to set up caravans and travel to far off cities to buy and sell their wares. Another principle of the marketplace is that there can be no monopolies, and monopolies come about when one permits capital to command the price. So there can be within a marketplace no wholesale price and no retail price. A person is not permitted to undercut his competitor simply because he is wealthier and able to buy more stock. Please note that when I talk about wholesale price and retail price, I am referring to within a marketplace. That does not mean that it is not permitted to sell wholesale and retail outside of a marketplace. It is only within the confines of a marketplace where this applies. Umar ibn al-Fullah passed by a man selling raisins, two months of raisins for one dirham, which was below the price that other people were offering in the marketplace. He was offering two months instead of the usual one particular price. So he said to him, Zid the sell wa illa akhruj min sukhila. Either raise your price or leave our market. Either raise your price or leave our market. All of these principles are to ensure that there is freedom of opportunity and guard against monopolies on the cornering of the market. And that is essential to preserving the health of a society and preserving equity within it. Every urban area needs such a market, just as every urban area needs roads, highways, and places of worship. Without it, everyone is soon converted into wage slaves for the giant monopolies and corporations that take their place. And all human dignity is lost. This market is the first step towards the establishment of such a zone. It will give us a taste. And I'm saying it will give us a taste. I'm not saying that it is the free marketplace. I'm saying it will give us a taste of what a real market can be like. But this market is still held in the courtyard of the mosque. And so some of these principles will not yet be applicable. For the Heba, the awe-inspiring nature of the mosque, must be maintained, and chaos and disorder cannot be allowed to fall in front of its doors. So a certain amount of planning and structure has been necessary, and a certain care in the selection of what is to be sold. But that does not mean that we should be put off for as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Ahli Qudsi, إِذَا تَقَرَّبَ الْعَبْدُ إِلَيْهِ شُرًا تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ إِلَاعًا وَإِذَا تَقَرَّبَ مِنِّي هِرًا تَقَرَّبْتُ مِنْ هُبَاعًا وَإِذَا أَتَانِي مَشْيَا أَتَيْتُهُ هَرْوًا If you move an inch close to me, I will move a cubit close to you. If you move a cubit close to me, I will move a span close to you. And if you come to me walking, I will come to you running. Each step we take towards our Lord, each time we put some of his teachings into practice, the more of those teachings he places within our grasp. This market is the first step in the establishment of the free marketplace. It is the first step in the establishment of the free marketplace. Our steps and our intentions will be rewarded. And if we make a success of this, our Lord So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this endeavor a success and help us re-establish the markets and recover our lost dignity and economic freedom. We ask him to make us traders the like of those described by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu now when he said, Usikum bin tujjar, Usikum bin tujjari khayra, fa inna hum burudul afla wa amana Allahi fillah. I advise you to treat the traders well, for they are the Allah's trusted one of this earth. 